sloops and cutters. What's the difference? To help show what the difference is between a sloop and a cutter, I built this nifty model. On here we have a dowel that's going to serve as the mast, we have a head stay, and we have a back stay. And to act as a, a deck step, I have an old chain plate from a re-rig I did a long time ago. That is why you always need your shrouds, because otherwise you'll lose your stick. What is the big difference between a sloop and a cutter? The modern definition for what makes a sailboat a sloop or a cutter is really dumb. It's how many head sails does the boat have. It's, it's dumb. But sadly, that is the modern definition or distinction. So you'll see people talk about converting their sloop into a cutter by simply adding an inner force stay and adding a stay sole and then calling it a cutter. It is not a cutter. The actual definition of a cutter is where is the mast in relation to the boat? The actual definition of it is if this is the hull and here's the bow and here's the stern, there's the 40% line. The boat's divided 40% bow, 60% aft of that. That is the point that determines if it's a sloop or a cutter. If the mast is forward of the 40% mark, it's a sloop. If it's aft, it's a cutter. When you think of a sailboat, you usually think of the mast being in the middle of the boat. That would be a cutter because the mast is at the 50% mark for aft. That would be a cutter because it's an even area and it's beyond, it's behind the 40% line. What is the big advantage of having the mast forward or aft or any of this? Well, there's a couple things. So having the mast further aft gives you a bigger area up front to have a second head sail. And that is where the old definition of a cutter having the mast further aft and then having two head sails came to be. So people just associated the two head sails as a cutter, irrespective or regardless of where the, the mast was located. But the true definition was the mast location. So in order to actually convert your sloop to a cutter, you need to relocate the mast aft. It's a big project and it's a lot more involved than adding a staysail. Upwind performance depends on how tight you can get your head stay. So the tighter the head stay is, the better the boat will perform going upwind. And the reason is simple. As the wind fills the sail, the sail is actually going to billow and pull out and you get what's called head stay sag, which is literally the head stay sagging. So it'll just wonk out everywhere and not hold where you want it. So when you're going upwind, you really want the head stay to be nice and taut. To do that, these stays are shared, so they share the load. So the force that goes from here to here comes down here. If you just take your head stay and don't have a back stay and just tighten it, all you're really going to do is pull your mast forward. That, that's not what you want. What you want to do is tighten your head stay. And the best way to tighten your head stay is not to go forward and adjust the turnbuckle on your head stay. It's actually to go aft and tighten your back stay. So if you can tighten your back stay, you'll tighten your head stay. Now this is where it gets really interesting. Let's make here the classic sailboat, the one that every kid draws, where they just take a haul, put a stick in the very middle of it, and split the sails in half, make a nice triangle. What's going on here? Well, it's pretty simple. Your head stay and your back stay are about even length, and that means that where they attach at the head of the mast, it's also about the same angle. So the forces on both of these are the same. Now what that means is when you start loading the head stay and you get all that head stay sag going on, your back stay is pretty much even to it. So the more, as you tighten your back stay to tighten your head stay, you're doing the same load. So it's a lot of force on your back stay in order to get enough head stay tension. And if you don't have enough head stay tension, you're going to see your head stay sagging out and going kind of wonky. It's not really great for going upwind because for upwind you want to keep the luff of the sail straight and where it's supposed to be, not billowing off to the side. That's when you're going downwind that you want that, which is the reason that cutters are great downwind. You move the mast forward a little. Now we're at the 40%, so it's 40 forward, 60 aft, right? What happened? Well, the angle up here of the head stay got smaller and the angle to the back stay got bigger. Now this isn't complicated sailing magic, this is simple physics. You change the angles, you change the forces. When you tighten your back stay, the head stay gets tighter. And it's nothing fancy, it's just that now 
this is more effective to pull on your head on your mast so it's able to pull the mast back which makes this get really really tight because the angle is so much shallower so this really can't resist the pull of the backstay because it is really pulling hard and at a great angle so let's go into sloop territory and move our mast even further forward so now we have our real short head stay so our head stay is nice and short and our back stay is really long and you can see the angle to the head stay is tiny while the angle to the back stay is huge so as I apply tension here this guy gets really tight and the back stay is still pretty loose so what's going on here this simply means that when you're going upwind you can tighten your back stay just a little and your mast is going to bend the head stay is going to get really tight everything's going to be perfect and you're just going to go upwind like a machine what about this tiny little baby jib that you got going on up here well there's a simple thing you can do it's called a genoa and a genoa is sized you'll hear people talk about 150 or 180 or 200 percent genoa all that is is the distance from your forepeak to your mast that is 100 percent if you have this much distance because your mast is far forward on a sloop that's 100 percent you come back here you're really far aft now all of this is 100 percent so on sloops it's really common to hear people have giant massive genoas because they have a tiny little forepeak so what they do is they simply have the sail come further aft of the mast overlap the head sail uh overlap the main sail and give you a ton of sail area so you have a huge main and then a giant genoa with a really nice tight head stay and all your rigging just set to take you to windward for that is one reason why sloops go to windward so much better than a cutter and it's also a reason why you're able to get such better head stay tension on a sloop as opposed to on a cutter if you're wondering what's the difference between a sloop and a cutter that's all it really comes down to is the mast forward it's a sloop mast is further aft of 40 percent it's a cutter and then from a performance standpoint a cutter simply has less head stay tension as compared to a sloop for having the same amount of backstay tension now you might be wondering why not just crank the backstay just make it really really tight that way you get a nice tight head stay well look at the mast you're gonna break your rig you're gonna rip your chain plates out of the deck stuff's gonna break so that's why cutters tend to have a more slack head stay and then they suffer from head stay sag when they're going to windward where sloops don't have that issue as pronounced they still get head stay sag all sails get that but it's just how much and how can you control it as you guys can see I've made this nifty little model sailboat and we're planning on doing tutorial videos that discuss the differences between you know different rigging aspects so if there's any ideas that you guys have or suggestions for future videos please let us know that way we can make them the next video let me know if you guys like this idea is going to be talking specifically about overlapping head sails and how they affect the center of effort of a boat and how that affects its ability to balance so let me know if that's a topic that's of interest to you guys and let me know some other topics that you guys have in mind that you'd like us to cover thanks so much for watching be sure to like subscribe and share this video with your friends and if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map receive postcards from our ports of call and messages directly to the boat you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.